All right. Welcome. Today we are going to look at gears, speed, and torque. If you have been looking at this little animation here in the front, I hope uh, you have noticed that gears of different sizes do indeed spin at different speeds. We have this big blue gear that's moving really slow. And then as we go through some colors, it looks like they're going faster with the smallest gear here moving the fastest. And that kind of highlights one of the reasons we use gears. Okay, there's usually three reasons that we use gears in a mechanism. One of those reasons is that we increase the speed of movement from beginning to end of the mechanism. Sometimes we'll put gears together and we want to increase torque or the amount of power we have to do our work from the beginning to the end of the mechanism. And then sometimes we just need to change direction of movement. Uh, this little picture shows that sometimes you want to rotate an object in two different directions or sometimes you want to change the type of movement. This is called a rotary movement and you just want it to move in a straight line uh, at the end of your mechanism. So there's a number of reasons we could use gears when we build things. Whenever we connect gears together, we call that a gear train. The official definition says it transmits motion through interlocking teeth. And indeed, a gear has to have teeth in order to be called a gear. And when these teeth interlock, it transfers motion from one to the other. Notice that they do spin in opposite directions. So this gear at the bottom is rotating clockwise, and this gear at the top counterclockwise. All right. How fast a gear may turn compared to a gear it's connected to is called a gear ratio. So if we want to calculate how much faster a gear will spin at the end compared to the beginning, we could do that in a number of ways. In this case, we're going to look at the example of the red and the blue gear at the bottom. Red is moving quickly, blue pretty pretty slow. We're going to wait till these dots meet in the middle right there. And now we're going to count how many times a red gear goes around. One, two, and a half. So the gear ratio here would be two and a half to one. However many times the little gear turns around or the input gear, and then how many times the output gear turns around. Two and a half times the input gear for every one time of the output gear. It can be pretty time consuming counting gears spinning though, so we have other ways to measure gear ratios as well. I'm not going to have you calculate these, but just know that we can also calculate gear ratios by counting the number of teeth on each gear or by taking a ruler and calculating the diameter across each gear. And then a ratio of those would be uh, determined and that would be our gear ratio. Okay. At the beginning we used this word torque and said that we could use gears to increase torque. But what exactly is it? I know something like a force is a push or a pull in a straight line. So if I have a friend and we are just in the hall pushing each other back and forth, that would be a force as long as it is in a straight line. But if we actually grab somebody and spin and twist and pull and push them past us, that would be a torque. It is a, well, I call it a push or pull in a circular direction, but it's a twisting force and the amount of power you can have to apply to twist an object. Speed and torque have an inverse relationship. This means that they're somewhat opposite from each other. So as torque increases and power increases in a, in a mechanism, that means it's going to move more slowly. And then if I have an object that speeds up from beginning to the end, it also has less power available from beginning to end. All right, now you know the basics of why we use gears, and we're going to start building some things to see how we can apply that knowledge. Good luck.